New York is facing a new climate reality. Tropical storm Ophelia proved once again the city's infrastructure is not ready to handle extreme weather. Last week, controller Brad Lander announced his office will investigate the city's preparedness for future weather emergencies. Controller Lander joins us now over Zoom. Good morning. Good morning, Cindy. Great to be here with you. Thank you. Now, why is your office looking into the city's storm response and what do you hope to accomplish with the investigation? Uh, so, you know, when Tropical Storm Ophelia clobbered New York City a week ago Friday, you know, did enormous amounts of damage, separated parents and kids. Of course, it wasn't the first time we've had a hundred year storm. It was the second time in just two years. And after Hurricane Ida, which took the lives of 13 New Yorkers, the city put in place a new set of policies and protocols to keep New Yorkers safe during extreme rainfall. So what we want to do is say, did we follow those protocols? Are we cleaning the catch basins? Did we get notifications to New Yorkers fast enough? And are we making the infrastructure investments in the long run for our new climate reality? And when you get a storm like that, you've got to use it as an opportunity to say, this is our new climate reality. Are we preparing for it? How do we be more ready for future storms than we were for this one? That's right. And you're talking about Hurricane Ida hit two years ago and the Extreme Weather Task Force was created and the city unveiled a plan of action. But we still, you know, experience this disaster. So how will you tackle this differently? So we're going to take a look at the plans that the city put in place uh, after Hurricane Ida. That included something called the new normal, which uh, the de Blasio administration put forward after that extreme weather task force you mentioned. Uh, the Adams administration put out their own uh, plan called Rainfall Ready. We're laying out all those commitments on a, you know, in a clear spreadsheet. And then we're going to go through one by one by one and see what was happening in the run up to and on the day of the storm itself. Uh, how was catch basin clearing going? Were all the trucks ready to do it? Were the protocols for notifying people, especially people who live in basements, followed? And, you know, is everything in place? And then there's these long run commitments to it. It obviously takes a while to implement a big storm store uh, overhaul, but we're getting money from the federal government. How is that money being spent? And we'll just go through and take a real honest look. I think there'll be places where we probably say, uh, a city agency got this right. They were preparing, and I'm sure there'll be places where we say um, they didn't get this right, and that put New Yorkers at risk. We want it to be a real honest, fair, thorough assessment, because the point is not to look backwards and say what did or didn't happen. You've got to do that uh, to, to assess, but the goal is to get us more ready for future storms that unfortunately we know are coming. Now, our roads, transit system, and your home borough of Brooklyn really took a hit this time. So what needs yeah. to be prioritized? Yeah, so, you know, I live just a few steps from Fourth Avenue in, in Brooklyn, which uh, has flooded during extreme rainfall events for decades. It's just now there's so many more extreme rainfall events. And so, yes, uh, the city's Department of Environmental Protection can't prioritize every single project everywhere in the city. It has to take a strategic look. Where was the flooding the worst and put people's lives at the most risk? And how do we construct projects that can actually successfully address that flooding? There may unfortunately be areas where we can't provide that protection. And then we may have to have, as we do with coastal flooding, honest conversations with home and building owners. Those are not easy to have, but you can't pretend if you don't do the hard work, if you don't make those infrastructure investments, if you don't make sure the projects are getting done after you put them in the plan, um, you won't be ready when the next one comes. And again, thank God no one died during Ophelia, but in Ida, we lost 13 people and we wanna make sure we're keeping New Yorkers safe in future storms. All right, controller Brad Lander, thank you so much for being with us this morning. Really nice to talk with you, Cindy, and I'm glad for today we don't have uh, showers in the in the forecast, but that even shows why it's hard to do this, you know, on a sunny day, it's almost hard to remember the storm, and we have to hold ourselves to remembering uh, even on beautiful fall days like this one, so we can do what's re necessary to get ready for what lies ahead. Thank you so much. Great to be with you. Thank you.